Courtney. One, two.
outside of her students from a while ago. That's too funny. We are? No, I'm we're not. live. <laughs> yeah, we're no, we're live right now. Hi, everybody. Hell hey, yeah. Uh, we're we're oh, yeah. dealing with live on Instagram right now. We were live on Instagram, letting you all know that we're going live now at nine p.m. All right, I'll uh, I'll hit you with a little intro. <laughs> sure, go for it. Welcome back. To oh, can I just say one thing? Actually, the Yolk Podcast. I'm sure that you noticed we have a different overlay now. Um, we're trying out some new things. Um, that's all I had to say, actually. We're yeah. trying out different things. We have some cool, uh, the recent followers thing at the bottom right. And in the bottom left, you can find all of our socials. You just type at the old podcast on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, uh, and you'll find us. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, <laughs> you can see also we have a topic board now. Um, just want to make sure everyone can see that. Uh, we worked real hard on it. You can tell we put all of our effort into our handwriting. A lot of effort. <laughs> it took a long so, time, actually. <laughs> I hope that you all enjoy that. A current topic marked by one magnet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's get what into that? it. What just flew out of there? What was that? That was out of your... Was that your nostril? Or was that my head? I thought it was I like... Don't know. Well, right. Anyways, well, let's well, get two. into it. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give an intro. Sure, go ahead. All right. Hello, and welcome back to episode number four, four of number four. the Yolk Podcast. Yeah, the gaming episode. Today, on the menu, we're back to the gaming topic, a little bit more of that gaming news that we, uh, yeah, yeah, that had, gaming news. had a good time with, uh, in episode two. Uh, yeah. we're, we're trying to, you know, see what works here, trying to... Find the best way to get the viewer uh, able to give us some feedback, too. So if you have any comments on any of the topics listed on that board, feel free to leave them while we're talking about Absolutely. it. We'll get you involved in the discussion. Hell yeah. Um, if there's any part that you end up missing at any point during this, the VOD's going to be on YouTube either at the end of tonight or uh, at some point during tomorrow. Uh, all po uh, past broadcasts, excluding the pilot, are on YouTube. Um, rip pilot. So, yeah, rip pilot. Hey, B. Jack, what's going on? Thanks for stopping yeah. in. Is that, so. is that what I think it is? <laughs> that's Zister. Oh, that's... Okay. I thought it was Bob. <laughs> I think. No, may, maybe. Well, uh, sister, sister is just as good. Thank Zister. you. Um, all right. So let's get to the first topic. Let's get right into it. Yeah. So uh, Battle Royale. Yep. It's everywhere. It is. Is it a good thing? Uh, so just to start off, with, with the success of uh, Fortnite and PUBG, every company's trying to... You know, dip their toes into that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> into that, absolutely. <laughs> into that I have an entire list of games if you want me to read it um, off. Yeah. Okay, so sure. games that we know of right now that have a battle royale mode, which is could be 50 people, 50 v 50. Uh, in some cases, it's actually 8 v 8 Yeah. Um, in a certain game. I'll mention that after. Could be 100 v... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not 50 v 50. It, it's like one person. They had it's that 1 v 1, but through a whole... Yeah group of people so like a hundred players in total fortnite has 50 yeah, videos they do fortnite has a mode that's, that's why i was thinking about it um battle royale is a 1v1 mode in a sense of a larger scale you have a hundred players in a match you fight to be the last person um unless you play squads whatever anyways these are games that have it um h1z1 fortnite of course PUBG, paladins has a mode crazy there's tons of mobile games ton of mobile clones um that are trying to be like Fortnite, yep. etc. There's Red Dead Redemption 2 has one, actually. And that's the one that's like 8v8. Yeah. Like, you can play on teams, you can play 1v1, but it only goes up to like 12 players. Yeah. Um, Dying Light, which is a... Has, has a it does. Dying Light, which is a first-person... Um, survival? Survival... Thing? Parkour? Parkour, survival, <laughs> um, crafting, just all out... Like, It's a good game, but yeah, I guess for... That'll be right kind of cool now that I think yeah. about it. it you yeah. know, it it's fits. definitely yeah. in the market for it. Um, and it, it, the other thing is that's a game that kind of does a little differently. If you've ever played Dead Island, it's a lot like um, just first person. You craft weapons, you fight zombies, and, and it's all level-based. You level up throughout the game and get yeah. different abilities. Um, so that's cool. There's a game called Rules of Survival, Ring of Elysium. Um, those are kind of just two indie Developed yeah, games. those are games I would put in like the spin-off category. Yeah, right. Like because they're indie developed, well, they're not huge. The game Ring of Elysium takes Battle Royale and it adds it like you can have three different classes. You can have a snowboard for mobility. Yeah, you glider can have kit. glider kit. Um, 
Not really amazing, though. And, of course, Black Ops 4. Yep. So, uh, the main reason that we wanted to bring this topic up uh, is actually the games that don't seem like they belong in the genre, uh, but are starting to move there. So, the big one to talk about is uh, Black Desert, which is either a Chinese or Korean MMO. I'm not not sure which mm-hmm. one it is, but it was ported over to the U.S. a couple years back. It's actually seen a lot of success. It's considered to be a pretty good game. Um, so, I did some research on it. Uh, it was pretty recently added. Uh, and for those who don't know, you know, MMOs, big RPG-style games... Um, Battle Royale doesn't really seem to fit, and the reason for that is generally because uh, rather than it being all determined by, like, your weapon, um, you usually have a class that's going to determine your abilities. You usually have, like, a ton of pieces of gear that also impact your stats. Um, And throughout an MMO, usually uh, the gearing process is somewhat randomized. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's really not, like, an equal playing field by default. Uh, so the way that uh, this company decided to go about it was everybody uh, has an equal uh, item layout. They all have the same stats, um, and they're also all given the same mount. Okay. Um, and essentially, uh, just like other battle royales, uh, eventually you know a zone starts closing in, and it forces people into closer combat, so they actually have to fight. Uh, instead of having like loot chests and stuff like that, uh, like randomly generated Loot. weapons. Yeah. yeah. The way it works is a beam of light pops up, and in that beam there is a single piece of upgraded gear for what you already have. Okay. Um, I don't know how many item slots are in Black Desert. I know in WoW it's like somewhere around 14. So granted, if you can get all 14, you'd probably be a house. <laughs> but Is this the kind of game where... So in World of Warcraft, you have like your your number keys, like one to attack, yeah. two to attack. Is this game similar to that? Yes. Yeah, so it is like that, uh, but I believe so. World of Warcraft, you call that style of game tab targeting, okay? Which is you hit you, tab and then you. So yeah, so smash. tab cycles through different targets. Uh, you can also just click with your mouse to pick mm-hmm. somebody, but essentially, once you have them targeted, uh, your abilities are going to hit them. There's a few skill shot type abilities, but the vast majority of them are just a cast time or mm-hmm. an instant ability uh, i believe black desert is a little bit more towards the action targeting style okay but i'm pretty sure that there is still some tab targeting in it i'm not positive and um, in an mmo like that you would like there would be different armor sets different things that are better or worse and in this mode right. they just strip they're, it down they're to... all the same yeah everybody See, gets the same I, one like there's some games i feel that just don't need a battle royale game, and this game seems like number one. I, I to think me. Um, I think it's interesting. The game is essentially warping its identity to to get a piece of the battle royale market. Yep. Like it's it's changing it it's like. it's yeah. changing what it is to a battle royale game, which it's not bad per se. I mean, you can say that it takes production money and like game designer money and ships it away from the main game. And brings it on to something that maybe people don't want in the community. Yep. Um, seems like a lot of these games they want they're like flash in the pan. Like when they, I'm sure when they release this, like top or bigger streamers were probably playing it for a day More or two. More than likely. Yeah. So that's usually how most of these games go. Is like the game will get released, streamers will play it for whatever. You'll see the spike on Twitch. You'll see it be number one or two. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And then after a day or two, it calms down. No one ends up sticking with it, and then people are back to the the main yeah. PUBG, Fortnite, etc. Yeah, so my take on it is I actually think it makes sense. Uh, and the reason for that is because the MMO market as a whole uh, for PvP is starting to move into that kind of arena. Even WoW, which, you know, WoW is still the biggest MMO as far as I know, but I don't think there's one that's been able to eclipse it. But uh, previously in WoW, the gearing system was entirely pve based like way back in vanilla wow and essentially all of the gear that you got in pv would also transfer over to pvp because there were no pvp stats and because of that uh just from being a good pve player you'd also get to the point where you're just one-shotting people in pvp uh warriors were notorious for that Mm. and as the game went on they started making more pvp specific gear so they added stats like pvp power and resilience 
which is essentially just more damage against players, less damage taken against players. Interesting. Um, and now, in modern times, they pretty much just equalize stats across the board, so everybody's on a much more level playing field. I'm sure there's still some variance so that uh, you feel like you have power uh, and your grind wasn't wasted, but it's much more of a level playing field now. And I think, you know, with Warcraft doing something like that, uh, Black Desert doing it is kind of natural. Black Desert's a much more heavily PvP-focused game than okay. Warcraft is. Uh, I'm not positive what the end game is like for Black Desert, but I know that they have these huge, huge PvP battles that a lot of people end up going towards. Like, is it talking game content? Yes. Okay. And I'm talking, like, guild versus guild combat, right? Where, like, hundreds of players in yeah. one big PvP arena, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And so for them, shifting to having a battle royale kind of makes sense. Um, and like I said, with gear equalization being a pretty big topic across the board now, I don't see it as too far of a stretch. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with the fact that it's pulling development money away from what the majority of the player base is there for and putting it into something that a fraction of the player base is going to like. Um, a big uh, thing that I saw was the official like Reddit post where it was showing everything. A lot of the comments were like, Great, now we have, we're have we going to have uh, our community split and stuff like that. We're going to yeah. get a bunch of new people who only want to play Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. and they're not interested yeah. in the rest of us. Yeah. And, you know, while there were also an equal number of comments saying, just don't play the mode, mm -hmm. it's kind of an invalid argument because there was inevitably money taken away from the in-game content that right. the, the actual players That's the thing wants. is that you're, you're, when you make a new mode like that, and I want to read a few comments after yep. this, but uh, when you make a new mode like that, you're also sacrificing developer time and effort so where the developers were working on something you enjoyed of the game or the vast majority of the player base right of course but they're they're taking that aside and putting it on to yeah um trying to get, make the game more popular to today's uh, meta um so rojack says in the chat love that that idea way better than loot box money grabs that's fair yeah. Like, I, I think it's actually a good way to go about putting a Battle Royale into the game. Mm -hmm. And it probably will bring more players in, which every MMO wants and needs. Yeah. But it's also worth saying that Black Desert, uh, for cosmetics, I'm almost positive there isn't a single way to get, like, a matching gear set unless you pay for it. See, that goes into the loot box thing we were talking about in the last one. was like, that's kind of fair. Because it's cosmetic. It's, okay. it's yeah. cosmetic. Like, I I don't condone it necessarily, but it's better than stat boosts or yeah. weapon boosts, we enhanced weapons. Uh, and another comment from Raven says, "Wow, PvP has just been on a downhill slope." Now, you as I, a WoW player, yeah. do you? I, I don't really have a comment on it. I haven't been big into PvP since uh, Miss of Pandaria, which was like six years ago mm -hmm. or something at this point. Um, I know that the PvP community has shrunk pretty substantially. There's not as many like big names in the PvP community as there used to be. Uh, this year, Blizzard announced that they're doing a, another uh, Arena World Championship, so that'll probably put some more life into the scene. Sure. Um, but I, I agree that if it is true that everything's equally balanced, then there's just no reason to continuously grind it other than for fun. Because mm -hmm. if you're a dedicated PvP player, then there's no reason for you to gear your character if right. your stats are equalized anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm a little iffy on how it works because I haven't PvP'd in so long. Yeah. If it's true that the PvP, which I don't play WoW, so I wouldn't know, but if it's true that the PvP is going on a downhill slope, I think it'd be interesting, or interesting if they did choose to try and reignite it with a Battle Royale mode. It's interesting. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised they, they either. I mean, I feel like if you are desperate for something, I mean, Battle Royale will get you that flash in the pan. It might not be sustainable. I think a cool way to do it, specifically for a while, would be to have PvE elements in the PvP Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. So there's like, uh, so it'd probably be group play. That's probably the best way to do it rather yeah. than solo. Because um, WoW is balanced around, you know, the holy trinity of tank healer and dps and in uh pvp having a healer is huge like if you don't have a healer on your team and the enemy team does you're just gonna lose yeah um so i think teams would make the most sense but have it be like the way you get 
upgrades for your gear is through killing PvE stuff. And then okay. killing players, you can take their gear too. I think that'd be cool. I think the PvE is a really good place for Battle Royale places to go. I think when uh, Black Ops Battle Royale came out, mm -hmm. having the zombies in there was like yeah, it was fun. super sick. And it just adds another level of Especially with groups, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, but definitely. I think the PvE is awesome. Do yeah. You, do you think that Battle Royales will, I had a better word, but like evolve? Or do you think it's here to stay? Um, I mean, is anything ever really here to stay? Like the Guitar Hero phase, that came and went, but that was hot when it came out. That's what I'm saying. Is it like Guitar um, Hero? I mean, Guitar Hero is. Basically well, I, I have this thing that I always say is that the only... Now, Fortnite, obviously, is the top Battle Royale game because it's free and it's on every platform. Uh, my my honest theory is that the only thing that can kill Fortnite is Fortnite. I feel the same way about WoW. The only so, thing that's going to kill WoW is WoW. Right, so, like... In, can you just explain that? Like, like, there's... I personally don't feel as though there will be a game that topples Fortnite in the Battle Royale genre. Okay. I feel as though Fortnite is on top, and it, it is. Like, I feel it deserves to be. Um, but I feel as though there won't be a game that comes out that destroys it, and that the only way they will destroy it, or something will destroy Fortnite, is if Fortnite destroys itself. Like, through its decision-making? Through a terrible decision, a terrible update, something that keeps people from playing. Um, Rojack actually just said, haven't played WoW in a long time, but WoW's focus was usually on the PvE and raids. Yep. They moved away from the massive 40-person co-op stuff, though. It was always hard organizing people. I agree, because when I played it for a solid three to four months, um, I had the most fun on the PvE. And, like, we didn't really do raids, but no. but I did plenty Dungeons of PvE. Stuff Dungeons, fun. yeah, it um, was awesome. Yeah, so in the raid scene, uh, they shift from 40 players down to 25 and then they had a phase where they had 25 and 10 as the options. Uh, 25 kind of died and became obsolete because it was way easier to get a 10-man group. It's a hard-boiled hard egg. That's a hard-boiled egg. Hey, we got a new follower. We got a new follower. That? Thank you, big deal. Wait, we shouldn't have heard that, though. How did we hear I that? I can fix it. Just continue our conversation. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, 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 where, okay. where WoW is now, uh, there's... Uh, Normal and heroic difficulties, which are a flex from anywhere between 10 to 25 players, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the highest level, which is Mythic, where all the you know really hardcore people are, mm -hmm. is uh, a locked in at 20. So if you have I, if you have 19, it's still at 20 difficulty. Sure. And it just kind of elevates the boss's health and stuff like that based on how many players you have. Yeah, and, and that that's... I mean, I'm also a little biased in the sense that I enjoy PvE games more than PvP. Yeah. Um, Most of the WoW community is in it for PvE. Yeah, and that that's that's what I kind of focus on when I played it was the PvE. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't think I ever played PvP. Maybe a duel here and there because yeah. you can duel players. But um, anyways, if we're done on that, uh, I had a couple okay, of things okay. to add. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think it's interesting that Fortnite was the one. I guess PUBG kind of started blowing things out of proportion. But Fortnite yeah. was really the one that, like, blew everything out of proportion. Because, you know, we had tons of games. We had, like, the Minecraft, which is, like, the the initial. And yeah, then the Hunger Games. And like, the H1Z1 yeah. phase. Um, I'm wondering, it, it's interesting that Fortnite is both dumbed down and complex enough to, to serve all, uh, like, age ranges. Yeah. yeah. I, I would think that's probably why it happened. Do you have any other... Um, as to why it's the biggest? Yeah, I mean... Um, I mean, the art style is so original. Like, it, it, like, a game like H1 versus PUBG is like, you got these humanoids, you got motorcycle helmets as helmets. Yeah. It's like, it, they're trying to be their own, but they're so similar in the sense that they, they're, they're the same. They're like... Yeah, they're real life. Right, right, real life. Whereas Fortnite has these cool... Um, animated characters, great art style, fun, different, like little things you notice, like the grass is, like it, it, it looks like, um, I don't want to say pop art, but like basically just the art style comes together. All the characters look great. Um, graphically, it's not hard to run at all. It's free everywhere. Yeah. Um, it, the 
gun gunplay is pretty balanced for what it is. I mean, they've been tweaking it forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, and yeah, I mean the building and everything. Like it's all it's all fun and easy to yeah. do. I think that's what really sells it. I think it. I think free is the big part. Yeah. Um, free and I, I don't know. Is PUBG free now? No. Or is it still twenty bucks? It's, it's like thirty still, bucks. Still, yeah, still yeah. So the big thing too is with Fortnite being completely free and there not being any real microtransactions for power. Um, it's like you can start playing it, and be like, "Man, this game's sick," and then before you know it, you're in. You know? Yeah. Did you guys see? Uh, this will be interesting to talk about. Do you see Counter Strike? They, they, have a battle they had a battle royale yeah. mode, and it looks like poop. <laughs> I mean, Counter Strike kind of looks like poop well, in yeah. general. Graphically, it's not the worst, but like, there. I now, granted, I haven't tried it, so I, I, yeah. I'm not the one to comment on this really, but um, I did see gameplay of it, and there's apparently so many issues where you can you stand a certain distance, and it doesn't render far enough for you without a sniper scope. So the problems that players run into is like in the window across the street or something, yeah. there'll be a character there, another player, but they can't see it from across the street because it hasn't rendered or something like that. Yeah. Gameplay bugs, pretty much, yeah. which is unfortunate. And Counter Strike, it doesn't need it. <laughs> doesn't need it. Yeah, that's the thing. I think it's intended more just to be like a fun thing. But there are a lot of interesting gameplay aspects that kind of. It brings new things to the table. Um, one, like, ammo is, like, extremely scar uh, scarce. Mm. Like, like you get no ammo. You have to, like, really focus on ammo. Okay. Um, and you can kind of, like, mess around. You have, like, this tablet that shows everybody's position on the map. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of, like, mess around and leave your tablet in a zone and go to another zone and bait a player to come to, you to your tablet since everybody can see everybody. A lot of cool gameplay things that uh, were there that are kind of trying to in innovate the genre a little yeah. bit. Unfortunately, visually, CSGO, you know. It's, it's on Source. It's dated. Yeah, it's dated. It looks, yeah. Source 2. It looks dated. not that great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's most of it. Yeah, I think we can move stuff. on to the next topic. Oh, no, I'm, I still have a few more things on oh, the Battle Royale. No. Um, what I wanted to talk about was, first off, Red Dead Redemption 2, one of my favorite games of all time, has a Battle Royale mode that they recently added, like, maybe three, two weeks ago. Um, and the way that one works is you, you spawn either on a team if you're doing squads, which is a team of, like, eight people, or uh, solo, and you, you don't have any weapons, you can run around. You run into the zone, so you spawn on, like, for instance, it'll be a little part of the map, so a big mansion. Yep which is like the Braithwaite Manor, which is what it's called. But you spawn all around the mansion, you, you know, cowboy hats and whatever. You can grab horses. There's horses on the map. Um, there's, you know, guns that you find. The closer you get to the middle, it seems like that's where the best guns are. Um, right now they have the bow and arrow, which the explosive arrow, which one shot with that and you're blown into pieces. So that's pretty busted. But um, <laughs> overall, the mode, because now, again, with the bias... Rockstar Games is one of my all-time favorite developers, and they go far beyond everyone else that I think of, except for Blizzard, of course. Um, they they have it balanced, and that's okay, but <laughs> it, it's hard to put into words. It's like the game doesn't need it, but like, and, and it feels like a cash grab, but it's it, it's so well done. The, the and and it's battle fun, yeah. Like, yeah. like it's not your generic. Like, it, it's it's like an old west battle royale, and it feels good. How does the AV8 work? Do you so, all spawn in separate sections? So you just spawn team up at the end. Yeah, like you. Well, no, no. You spawn with your team in a row. I know it's it's a little so strange. So it's kind of just like there's no like drop in from a plane or like ride your horses. So in. how does it differ from deathmatch? That's the thing. Is it just it, like it's it's just one life. It's deathmatch so with like one life, and, and you have to find weapons, and you have to pick up weapons. Yeah. Okay. So, so for a for a game like that, I I mean it works, but it, it goes into saying like, is it a cash grab? Is it still I don't, one shot to the head? Yeah. So it's it's all balanced, just like the other modes would be. Um, the only thing is, is like. It, it, it does hurt them to think like maybe they went for a cash grab yeah. but at the same time the game's so popular that you, you know they didn't need to do it is the varmint rifle in that mode I think you can pick it up <laughs> the varmint rifle is a small rifle you kill rodents with 
but it's a one shot to the head and has a, a crazy fire it's rate. an amazing gun <laughs> against players that is all I had on Battle Royale alright yeah so you want to shift our topic sure <laughs> we are going to Nintendo consoles yeah now, this is an interesting one so <laughs> essentially <laughs> um, the president of Nintendo uh, located in Japan uh, made a statement that in the future not the near future just it's a possibility that Nintendo might look away uh, from developing their own home consoles. They might shift away from that. Uh, now, obviously, the Switch has been a huge hit, and it's still selling like crazy. Like Which They can barely keep them on the shelves. But, essentially, uh, Nintendo had this program going for like a really long time mm -hmm. about adopting uh, their consoles into life. Mm -hmm. And that's why they had, you know, the Wii U where it has the tablet where you can take it into a different room yeah. so that somebody else can use the TV. And they have the Switch, you can bring it with you in the modern world. Um, but that program ended. And now at this point, they're kind of at a crossroads. And they don't really know where they want to go with their console development. Right. Now, I personally think it could be a good thing. Um, and the reason for that is because it is it's pretty much a matter of fact that consoles themselves don't actually generate much revenue selling a console isn't really where the company makes money they usually sell the consoles pretty close for what it costs to make them okay um what actually makes money is uh selling like games and stuff like that um and on top of that you know like the subscription service where you got to pay 20 bucks a year or whatever for yeah, uh, your like internet access membership. Yeah, okay, stuff like that. That's what makes money. Yes, I know. Um, so, the reason I think it might be a good thing is it's kind of Nintendo's kind of notorious for releasing their consoles after the new generation comes out. Right? They did this uh, with the Wii U, right? So Xbox and th uh, 360 and PS3 were already well established, mm -hmm. and then the Wii U came out, yep. and its uh, hardware was outdated the second it came out. Yeah, uh, and then the Switch came out after the Xbox One and PS4 were well established, and its hardware was outdated before it even came out. Um, and that generally doesn't affect Nintendo too much. I mean, they're no. really good at developing games around their uh, hardware limitations, but if they start developing all their first-party titles as, uh, like, open and cross-platform, I guess, in that sense, like, not, like, you know, playing with Xbox and stuff like that, right. but, like, it's available on all all platforms um it's hard to imagine what nintendo first party development would actually be able to do with current hardware um, I, I mean i think and this alludes also to uh ubisoft uh actually made a statement that they think the next generation will be the last generation so i think you know once that shift happens like it's gonna be like the wild west all over again like sure like, you gotta figure out what to do. Actually, another interesting thing I found is that um, Google showcased that they could run um, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey in Google Chrome, like tab, like in a Google Chrome tab. <laughs> interesting. So it's like, I think a lot of them are focusing on like streaming, like or like databases, cloud databases where you can have all the games or whatever and you play like, pay like a, a streaming fee it is one thing I find weird about these statements is like you still need hardware so it's like you want to hear something crazy what? Uh, you know Linus Tech Tips yeah there's this video on his channel about this company I think they're already offering their service I know Shadow yeah Shadow yeah 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 and essentially uh, you pay a monthly subscription you get access to like every game and in their you know, storeroom or whatever, their warehouse, they give you, uh, you alone, access to, like, four, uh, four 1080 TIs. So, um, you, basically, you stream a game. That, to like, their console. Like, for instance, pretend this laptop wasn't a beast, yeah. and it couldn't run um, Black Ops 4. You could go on that website, stream the game 
to your computer and play it as if you were just playing it on your PC. What? Yeah, yeah so that's crazy. They, yeah. they stream the games. So that's what that's what they're talking they, about. They I'm pretty sure that's the what they're talking from about. From their crazy rig that you're technically renting from them yeah. into you. Damn. They have a special uh, chip that you plug into your computer to reduce latency. Yeah. There was like a three ping difference between playing in their office and at home for Linus. Damn. By the way, we're not sponsored by them, but if they want to hit us up, um, <laughs> we'll shout crazy. them out. So you don't need any specs on your computer yeah, other than... You don't need any. You're literally just streaming it like a YouTube video. Yeah. Or wow. a Netflix. Yeah, I, well, I think... Netflix, uh, that's yeah. crazy. I, I think... They, well, that's why they're saying like crazy that stats. no one's going to have a console because that's I mean, insane. If yeah, that I, keeps it up, It's yeah. seamless switching to any device. Yeah, I I saw people play it on their phone yep. too. They plug in a controller on their phone and they're just streaming a game to their yeah, phone. Yeah, it's click of a button. So he went from PC to phone to TV to tablet to laptop. Absolutely nuts. That is nutty. Like for real. And that cuts cuts a lot of cost because you I know it's like it's like somewhere around like sixty bucks to do it. I don't know if it was a month or a well, year. Well, yeah, they're obviously going to be yeah charging. They, they got to charge something at but least initially. If let's say it's sixty bucks a month, realistically, you don't have to buy another game. You don't have to pay for hardware. Granted, that's a ton of money every year, sixty yeah. bucks a month. But but it's not it's not giving you the game essentially. You're playing it, but you're not going to be able to keep it. And but you, that it's physical not copies are gonna disappear. So. They are, but at the same time, like someone like me who's like an achievement hunter, I feel like playing on someone else's rig. Well, it's still your account. It is it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. still your Steam account. Whatever. You just have a cloud-based account with all your data saved. Hmm. Because I would still want to get achievements and like have it on my profile. Like, yeah. Because to me, I don't know. That just kind of that matters. That is wild though, and that would cut. I mean, I don't think it works through Steam. Well, I think sure it's through it their engine. Yeah, you know. and this mm. will be the future yeah. eventually. Um, I was gonna add also that the PS3 on launch, they were losing two hundred forty dollars per console. Yep. And Why? Because the they needed to put like a Blu-ray player and like all ah, this other stuff, yeah, okay. but like everything and like gotcha. at the times they just figured and that they were selling at like five hundred bucks a pop. Yeah. So that's that's a lot. That's a huge loss. Yeah. And I mean, they still it eventually took time. I think that the Xbox sold for, or was that a loss of one one hundred twenty five? So the Xbox made even on console yeah, sales. But they they know faster. they're gonna make their money back. Yeah. Well, but, from what I've been hearing, uh, I think it was this year or last, well, twenty eighteen. Um, PS four dominated the sales market. Yeah, PS four absolutely killed it. And you can easily throw that at um, God of War. Spider-Man PS4. Um, sorry, I just want to double-check something. Tone Balone, thank you, Dad, for following. Hey. Um, <laughs> um, where was I? Okay. Uh, PS4, God of War, PS4 had God of War. They had... Oh, Rojack, I'll get to you in a minute. God of War, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2, which that was for Xbox as well, but the thing is, is like people are going to buy it on PS4 because PS4 has been doing not only really well, but they also have... In theory, better specs than the Xbox yeah. One. Better, and people are going to want that better performance in a game like Red Dead. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read Rojack's comment. Yeah. Looks like many of the gaming companies are thinking shifting to this model, though. The problem will always be for users who don't have access to fast and stable internet connections. Yeah. yeah. There's a problem That's right the there. big issue. Um, so, in our area, I, we don't have, like, fiber optic networks yet, right? No. I, I don't think we have access. I, I don't believe so. I, I don't, don't think we have access to, like, the one gigabit connections. Um, I know mine's like 150 down and 50 up, which is quick enough for mm-hmm. what I need it for. But the question really is, is like how much internet power does it take to stream like a 4K game to mm. to your computer in yeah. live time? I have, I have no idea. It <laughs> must take a ton of bandwidth. I have no idea. To bring it back to Nintendo, um, the thing with them is that they don't need like an Xbox One um, require spec requirement because their games essentially, like you know Mario Odyssey, you don't need that. You don't right, need it. So to you be... don't need it. But imagine if they had that power. The thing is, is like 
I'm okay with playing in handheld mode, which is what, 720? I think so. Like, I, I mean, if they had the power, great. All yeah. the more to them. But they don't need it. They've already shown with Smash Bros. they can run it with yeah. decent graphics at 60 frames per second and maintain a steady frame rate. And there's been some ports to the system, granted, that aren't necessary. But in my honest opinion, it's because when you buy a Nintendo system, you're buying it for Nintendo games. Yeah, exactly. You are. You know? But, like, people will still use it as their primary console. Like, I believe um, a wrestling game came out on the Nintendo Switch, and it was god-awful. Yeah. It ran at, like, 24 frames. It kept <laughs> dropping. Um, the graphics were terrible. But basically what I'm getting at is, like, I would understand if, like, the Switch or whatever comes next is it for Nintendo. Yeah. If they stop making consoles because it's just, it, like, it, it's a big question where, like, where do you go next? How much more detailed can Mario get? So, I understand that, but instead of thinking how much more detail can their current IPs get, think about what IPs they could make. Like, with the power, with the power of, like, you know, a, a desktop computer, your you know your rig, your nice custom gaming PC. What can Nintendo do, right? Because their first party games are almost always like amazing. They're almost always like really big hits, and yeah, they they, they haven't they don't have too many new IPs coming out all the time. Like Splatoon was one of the big recent IPs. Yeah, but that game did really well. Yoshi's. But Yoshi's but what, been around forever. Though. Yoshi. But what I'm saying is. Uh, think outside of the box. Don't think about what Nintendo already has. Think about what they could have. Because they're they're well known for being an incredibly talented development team. They are, but it's been... Okay, so Splatoon showed up, right? Yep. So that's the newest? I don't know if it's the newest, but it's... Relatively new newest? One. Yeah. Um, I don't see... And this maybe this is me being crazy, but I don't see any new characters that will be more relevant than the ones they have. And I, I don't feel as though they need to take that extra step because what they have already, I, I just, I feel like Mario's been around for so long. Like, Pac-Man's been around for so long and he's not he's not a new IP, but they took him in to Smash sure. Bros. I just, I'm having a hard time seeing them creating anything more relevant so or any better than Mario will ever here's, be. Here's the actual issue, right? When you're on top, you're not worried about the people underneath you. You're worried about the new guy, right? Mm -hmm. People say it in sports all the time, right? When you're when you're at the top of the pro league in any sport, most of the time you're not worried about the current competition. You're worried about who's coming in yeah, in the uh, in the rookie yourself. year, um, and it's the same thing, right? So Mario's an awesome franchise. It's been awesome I'm just since using it that came right. out. That is the no, base. I get it. It's been awesome since it came out. I'm not worried about Mario. They can keep making Mario games the same way they have been for the past 40 years or mm -hmm. whatever. I, I don't know how long it's been. but um, I think it's been less than 40. I mean, probably. Didn't but, it come out like almost the, the 90s? Okay. 80s? It, it, yeah. I believe that. But I'm, I'm not worried about their current IPs. I think that saying nothing they could make would be more iconic than Mario or anything like that is unfair. Um, because Overwatch characters instantly became iconic when they came out, and they weren't a thing. Uh, like, everybody knows the Overwatch I think he's Overwatch talking cast. But Nintendo who, specific, though. But to be fair... Nintendo will never make something more To be more fair, iconic. unless, unless Probably you... Probably not. It's, it's but that's not impossible. what matters. No, but I'm that, just, but that's, that's just... But that kind of matters a little bit, don't you think? I mean... I don't. Uh, because, yeah, well, yeah. well, with Overwatch, I mean, not not... To be fair, I didn't know any Blizzard characters... Before Overwatch. Do you know Overwatch characters? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, well, I get what you're saying, but, like, they didn't have a Mario already. Well, to me, they did. Yeah, but, <laughs> but like, to the world. Yeah. Which I know there's more people than <laughs> you that like them, but, like, Mario is just general. Mario is just so... He slides through everything. Like, everyone knows Mario. Right. Whereas not everyone would know Murky, the Murloc. Yeah, that's so true. So what I'm saying is, like... See, now I'm kind of lost, but I, I know what I want to say. I know say. what you're saying. It's like, I know what you mean by they could make something better, but they've already established something. Like, I feel like it'd be hard for Blizzard to make a new character that isn't re related to Overwatch. Sure. Which is where Nintendo has been forever, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't and think they could make anything that would jump over Mario. 
I understand that. Like, what what I'm really not saying, uh, what what I'm not trying to say is that they're gonna make something more iconic than Mario. But what I am saying is they can still make iconic characters, right? Mario's been around for like three generations at this point. Yeah. Like, our grandparents know who Mario is. But three generations from now, maybe they'll know a new Nintendo IP and Mario. Yeah, I mean... It's tough, that, though. Uh, one thing I wanted to add is that Nintendo, I feel like it's never been a forward... We were talking about, like, forward thinking. Mm-hmm. I feel like Nintendo has never been, like, like a, a go-outside-their-boundaries uh, company. They made a 3D console. No, I mean, like, like, like <laughs> IP-wise. Like, like uh, I want to bring up a comment that's kind of supporting me a little bit. Um... Well, totally supporting me, but um, Lace Up says I agree with Jake. Companies tend to go back to the origin, and he brought the perfect example: Resident Evil Two. So, like, so that's I'll, an I'll give you a complete counter argument okay, right now. Okay, okay, okay. So lay it on me. Uh, Destroy me. Uh, and I, you know, I don't mean it in a negative way. No, we're just so, having a Resident Evil. Uh, went back to Resident Evil Two. But it's not in the same camera style as the first Resident Evil. It's uh, a complete rehaul. Right. But it's a completely different game. It might have the same story. It has completely different gameplay because the shooting mechanics are completely different. It works completely differently when you're looking from the top of a room than when you are looking over the shoulder of your character. So they moved an old game forward to fit with the current times. Uh, And then on top of that, Resident Evil 7 was completely different than any other Resident Evil game they've ever made because it was first person and not third person or uh, that camera view where you're looking inside of the room. And it was was a smash hit. And it was my favorite game. Um, What are we talking about? Are we talking about being iconic? So did Resident Evil 7. Uh, I'm not trying to bring the heat on Lace Up, just, but just... so did Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil, had, uh, <laughs> Resident Evil 7 had Chris uh, Redfield. Dead, Chris right? Redfield yeah. did show up. Spoiler, but it's been so long. If you haven't played that game by now, you probably won't. Um, let's bring it back a little bit. So, Because <laughs> now I've got so many different thoughts <laughs> well, and really emotions right now. Uh, Are we arguing that well, so the, companies need to rely on iconic characters? Essentially, yeah. That's where this is turned to. That's what it turned to. The thing is, is like, and Lace Up says um, they use the same iconic characters. So Resident Evil Two going back, it is remaking an old game. Yeah. But th- that's kind of different from what I'm saying. Yeah, where, it like, is. It is different. Remaking an old game is fine, but like you're using the same characters and the same story you already told. It's just advanced. Nintendo. I mean, they kind of already did that with Mario 64 versus Mario Definitely, Odyssey. Definitely, yeah. They, they've but, remade Mario countless But that's times. different from making a new character. Like, what if there was a new guy named, um, I don't know, like... like <laughs> Flarp. Flarp or something. Like, Flarp, and he's, like, Mario's next-door cousin. <laughs> Next like, door cousin. It's like you know. It's like no one's gonna remember Flarp. Well, no people... one even remembers Lu- Waluigi. He wasn't put. Yeah, in Smash. they do. He wasn't put in Smash. Bros. It was. A, it was on the top of the Reddit page that Waluigi wasn't in Smash. <laughs> well, the company themselves just said. <laughs> yeah, Waluigi. they did. They hate Waluigi. Um, apparently, it, it, I want to get back to the point, but it's like I, I kind of well, lost. I, I want to let Brandon talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go right ahead. I think at the root of it. These companies have had a chokehold. All all the big name companies have had a chokehold on consoles. These companies are not as willing to take risks because risk doesn't make sense. Yep. So they will stick to the similar IPs. They will put out g- multiple games. They will integrate characters into the games and have cameos, etc. I think once this uh, streaming games generation comes in, I think the whole entire format blows up. Or... It could just turn into a situation like Netflix, where Netflix is top dog, and all the other ones are kind of just crappy, but they're around. Yeah. You know, there's no clear top dog right now. Um, I mean, I feel like the battle is never really with Nintendo. Um, they're an outlier. Yeah, but they're strong. That's yeah. the weird part. They're, In terms of, like, what battle are we talking about? Like, consoles. Like, I think the, sure. the okay. true battle yeah. is never, yeah. Xbox and PS... Yeah. Uh, Nintendo PS4 doesn't even PS4. bother fighting with Xbox and well, PS4. The pro- the they're already that, above them in most cases, to yeah, be like honest. They, they, the, and that's where it comes down to, like, they, they have their own games on their system, and they know that that's working, and they're yeah. going to keep doing that. Yeah. It's safe. It's not, there's no risk. Just, right. just one, one thing to say is... Your argument would be just keep making games for the Switch, right? Well, I mean, you know, the Switch is honestly 
like the perfect console they could have made after yeah, the for, Wii. For this, yeah, I agree. It's an yeah. awesome console. It's yeah. way better than the Wii U, and I, I say it's better than the Wii. I like it a lot more. The Wii um, was very gimmicky, yeah. but continue. But So essentially, what, I, what I'm getting at is um, if you make the argument that the Switch has the perfect amount of power for Nintendo first-party games, therefore continuing development on the Switch, even after they decide to stop making consoles makes sense i think that's a fair thing to say but there's a time limit on how long they can actually make things for the switch because after a certain point like games are going to be at a level where they're not even similar to what can be produced on the switch that's that's fair i think the range now is i think it's increasingly squeezing there's diminishing returns yeah i mean to be uh, fair yeah. a game like red dead redemption 2 for instance couldn't play on the switch but that um, but does it need to that's what we're, that's what to. you're saying is that like nintendo will never make red dead redemption 2 therefore it doesn't technically yes, i think that's fine like i mean say. like make a massive open world high intensity realistic graphics demanding true product. well what you when you said realistic graphics because the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is, like, all of that. It's just real. Just without yeah. the graphics. And a frame rate issue. Um, um, so When I played it, at least. One last thing I'd want to bring up is... We're talking iconic with Nintendo. So, now, Mario, Zelda... Yeah, so what I was going to say is... Now, while Bayonetta isn't as iconic as somebody like Mario... Mm-hmm. Bayonetta is still a pretty big Nintendo franchise. Sure. Um, so, I guess what my argument would really be just to bring it into terms that you might be more understanding of, is imagine if instead of Bayonetta being, you know, like, small areas, it was just this huge open world with, like, f- completely filled with stuff to do. You know? So, we're on Bayonetta 2 right now. What if Bayonetta 3 was playable on PC in 4K... Uh, while it doesn't have realistic graphics, they're mm. way more realistic than something like Mario or most of Nintendo's other IPs. And it's a super action-packed game where you can really take advantage of... Um, uh, what's what's the word for, uh, like, lots of pixels? Um, uh, pizzazz. Uh, no. Sure, pizzazz. <laughs> um, uh, explosions. Uh, well, essentially, like for- but high definition uh, yes but there's like this certain word that has has to do with that so one. the game gonna, looks amazing over. the game looks yeah, beautiful um on 4k pc 1080p yeah and you 4K, know it's, it's really it's really quick action okay and it just looks really good is what i'm saying yeah i mean I, again i think this goes back to the, the diminishing returns like you're just talking about kind of expanding the boundaries of like gameplay whereas the graphic wise i think we're more and more reaching our, yeah. our cap. See now that now that's an exception, but what I'm what I'm thinking, what I thought of while you were saying that was that Nintendo as a game developer, game developers and their consoles, um, they focus on the game part of it. Yeah, and that's what like they can't lose that, so they don't need to advance because they focus on the gaming elements of it. Whereas Red Dead Redemption 2, you have to shave your beard, shave your hair. Mario doesn't grow out his mustache or anything. <laughs> like, they focus on literally, like, you're playing a character they made. He doesn't talk or anything. He goes around, gets coins, save the princess. It's been that same formula forever. They, they strive off of just game. It's literally, they know it's a game. Yeah, so but it's if, just a game. if you if you have like let's say like forty times more power, you can still keep your gameplay, but just make it look insane. But it doesn't need to. Because it doesn't then need it's not to. Like but it, I think it's inarguably better. Like I think like, graphics being better is inarguably better. I mean, even, I, I I can agree that like, even if it's not, like even if you have the same art direction, pixel density is better. I can That's agree tough. that like graphically I would be more attracted to a game that looks better than the game I recently played. Like you know, like Mario Odyssey to like whatever the hell comes next from yeah. them. Um but it's just it's a matter of like they're just games and, and Nintendo sees that whereas a game like um 
I don't want to use Red Dead again, but I I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the argument is invalidated by the fact that you can say, well, Diablo Two is the, is considered to be the best action RPG ever made, but you know it looks like absolute dog shit. It was made in 1998, <laughs> and yeah, it's still a great game. You can go and play it, but nobody wants to subject their eyes to that. <laughs> yeah, that's the, fair. The weird part is like, you say objectively better. Uh, I I mean I. I would say yes. If if you can't if you can't say that increased pixel density yeah, is objectively that's... better, then I don't think you can say that anything is objectively better in gaming. Mm. That's tough because I don't. That's hard to say objectively better. No, no, you... more pixels could mean more issues. You know. I guess. You know, like more more pixels in the bayonetta game could mean more pizzazz that you don't need. That could get in, in what in the way of storytelling or gameplay. Are you gonna try to argue with me that having better graphics takes away from story? <laughs> I'm not. I mean, like it's disc space. overdoing it. I guess not. I'm, I'm obviously in the hot seat on this one, so I'm not trying to be a dick when I say that. I'm not. Double that. I guess it's yeah. hard. To, you have to kind of specify graphics versus deliberately putting in graphical flares. Yeah, I'm. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that the Switch is an inadequate console for Nintendo titles. My argument is no more than the fact that if they had more power to work with, they could do more incredible things than they already are doing. I guess if you're in the same visual genre, like something like a like a like a Celeste eight bit or something like sure, that, which is from you know, what I've heard, fantastic. Yeah, I, I really want to play uh, that. The feel it's a different art form, so it's a different feel. Yep. Whereas like that game doesn't need I guess you could say it could take in more pixel density and It make, wouldn't be worse. But like it would ju- it just wouldn't be stylized. It would be a waste, right? Yeah. Because you'd just be getting like brighter colors or more pure Not whatever. Even necessarily, I mean. If we're saying we're staying in like an eight bit territory, all you're doing is increasing colors, right? I mean, isn't color depth better? <laughs> more depth than color like isn't isn't I guess it more nicer? options to have depth yeah i mean like sure. isn't it nicer to be able to see like the blackest white and the whitest i mean the the blackest black and the whitest white yeah i suppose even I if know. you're staying at eight i feel like there's a it's weird i, I guess i'm pulling from art but, too like i feel like there's but the thing is just because you have the option doesn't mean you need to take advantage of it yeah uh, well obviously having the option is better right always um so I guess that's true. I guess I'm just pulling from things like like in film. Like, you know, you still shoot on actual film because there's qualities that aren't like... Like when you polish things too much, you like lose the human touch. Mm-hmm. So like that's one aspect where I feel like in video games it could have that effect. I, that, I don't know. I think that's what... I don't have a good example. I think that proof. good example would go with what I was saying, whereas Nintendo keeps it... It knows it's a game. Whereas, like, a game like Grand Theft Auto takes it to a realistic level. Where, like, you would want a human touch on something rather than it be polished. You want it to feel like a game rather than you're watching a movie yeah. about so Super Mario. It is still it tough sounds to argue like, the, the look pixel at, thing. Looking at a nice paragraph of a comment, it looks like Rojack is leaning towards my argument a little bit. Okay. Um, he says, the problem with all media outlets lately has been the fear of taking risks on a new IP. That's why all we see is sequels and massive franchises. Big game studios won't take risks most of the time. They just follow guaranteed money. Indie game industry is the only way we see uh, new ideas. Unless it's from a massively successful creator like uh, Hideo Kojima. Yeah, that's, that, we, that's fair. That's that, we is, that is or fair. Or at least what I was saying, too. That Nintendo's yeah. never a company that wanted to take risks past its first ten years. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost it. What? I just... I. You guys are you goons. Lost, you, you guys lost are your goons. Egg? <laughs> you guys are friggin' goons. Your egg disappeared? Um, no, I, I agree. And the fear of taking the risk of a new IP is like, I guess because I'm, I, I'm not afraid for them. I'm just like, I might be in the same boat as them where I'm thinking, we don't need it. People are going to keep buying Mario. I just think it's an unfair way to look at it. Because, yes, saying that, like, we're guaranteed to put out a good game this way is a net benefit it's like if we stick to this formula we're going to make a good game Mm -hmm. but that leads to a state of no innovation um and while mario 
uh, is a great franchise, even in its own way, it still innovates every single game that comes out. Yeah. And the graphics still get better every single game that comes out. Sure. Despite the console, you're saying? Like, like mean, even on the same console, the games just get better because they there's always the new limits. ideas. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I think actually, like now thinking about, it, like I understand what you're saying. Um, like even in the Mario genre, or I guess you could even call I, I Mario mean, he, a genre at this point. I'm using him as a base because he's the top dog yeah. of Nintendo. But even even looking at Mario, like. Every single Mario game that comes out has some kind of innovation in it. Like, they always have some kind of new idea to work with. And it's always been on that same, like, you know, already outdated when it came out console. Sure. So I guess that's fair to say that, you know, the Mario franchise really doesn't need um, crazy power to make it better. Sure. And that's probably true. The, the thing they need, I think, personally, or well, maybe factory, I'm not sure, but is just more disk space. Like, for the Nintendo 64, pretend that they thought of Mario Odyssey during the Nintendo 64 era. Now, they would have smaller levels, of course, but th this is all disk space, etc. So, I understand the need for new consoles, etc. and stuff like that. But, if they just had more disk space, they could, they could make Mario 64 throw his hat and have it its own character. <laughs> but it's, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's you know like you know. Let, let's go to rojack yeah switch's strength is the ability to pick it up and go a lot of people who have spouses and families love having the ability to pick it up and go in a house where you have to share tvs or travel for work etc yeah that's that's the big thing the, about the, the switch the switch is the best thing nintendo could have done yeah. after the i actually situation. i would actually even say like if the switch had the performance capabilities of like you know the xbox or something mm -hmm. like that i would play all of my triple a games on the switch just because it's way cooler and that's fair it's just we know nintendo is bad at making triple yeah. a ports <laughs> they like, are the worst but uh i don't know just to i think we just break it down here okay um so my argument is that nintendo in the future uh deciding to no longer make consoles which is it's all hypothetical right mm -hmm. It was a statement made by their president. It wasn't like, yes, this yeah, is going to happen. Yeah, it's not confirmed that they're not going to It was do. just a statement. Um, I personally see a net benefit in it, not only uh, for the player of the games, but also for Nintendo as a company, because mm -hmm. they won't have to put money into research and development of a new console. They won't have to uh, take a, a, a money cut on every single console that mm -hmm. comes out or that they sell, which I don't know if they do on the Switch, but... Um, and they open all of their games to a broader market. Um, every like if Nintendo IPs are, you know, if the next Mario game is available on, you know, let's say it's still current gen, right? So if it's available on PS4, Xbox, and PC, as well as you know the Switch, if it's still around, um, at any point in the future, yeah, you know, we'll just I'll, I'll just cut it out. Say at any point in the future, if it's available on all of the current generation consoles and PC. The amount of people that have access to that game is infinitely higher, mm -hmm. multiplicatively higher, not infinitely higher, it's multiplicatively higher. People are more likely to buy it. They're going to people who have, haven't played Nintendo games in years, and they're like, holy shit, I can buy this game on the console. While you're um, talking about this, you should answer this comment. I think that you would answer this well. Do you think Nintendo will ever merge with PS or I Xbox? Don't I don't think they okay. would merge, um, but I mean, maybe they would come to some kind of an agreement where it's like, will only develop consoles for uh, games for Xbox, will only develop games for PS4. Sure. But I think that wouldn't be the correct business decision mm -hmm. because if, in my opinion, if they're stopping making consoles uh, or stopping the production of consoles, um, then their new strategy should be to sell games to as many people as possible so they can make money. Mm -hmm. I think there's a potential for more profit than they are already making in selling games to all platforms. I think Nintendo's going to explode, personally. I think it's in an outlier case where it relies on having its own console to play mm -hmm. its own IPs, and once this console era disappears and you have streaming services that are hosting all this, it's they're going to have to pay... Or they're gonna they're gonna have to give their game to someone else to yeah. other another service unless they make their own, but they're not gonna make their own because it's gonna be. I mean, they don't need to games. give away their games. 
They but just they, need to sell them on lose, other consoles. They lose their like niche, you know. Like they're still Nintendo yeah. games, but they're not theirs. They're not theirs anymore. <clears throat> like they are theirs, but like they're not theirs. Like right now, Nintendo is theirs. Yeah. You know, no one else has Nintendo. Right. They and can't that, get that's the strong suit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I think it's gonna explode. I don't. I don't think it will do well in the future if it doesn't mm. maintain its niche, and it won't be able to when streaming services come out. Unless, of course, they say. Well, we want to stream our own games, so you can pay us twenty dollars a month, and you can get every Nintendo game, yeah. and you, that won't give you access to anything but Nintendo. But we're not going to okay. give up on our our yeah. Nintendo product. So, Lace Up said, if PlayStation had Smash or Mario, it's game over for Xbox or vice versa. I want to come. I think on that. I think that's kind of true, man. I, well, the <laughs> like, thing is, is like if either console had it, yeah, they would topple the other console. The thing is, is that if Nintendo is going to do that, they're not just going to give it to one of them. I don't think so. I, I it's don't not think impossible. So. Not, well, it could be a big market because move. Because the thing is, is like just with assassinate yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, that's close to just wiping them off the, the map. The um, Rare, who makes Sea of Thieves, used to make games for Nintendo, which was Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo Kazooie yep. and Banjo Tooie. But those, after Rare, I guess, I don't know what happened essentially, but they split ways with Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And then Rare went to work with Microsoft, and Banjo Kazooie Banjo Tooie was ported to Xbox as the Xbox Arcade, and they ended up making a different game called Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which is the third installment of that series. And um, you know, th- so we've seen it happen before where they split ways, but that's that's not Nintendo. That's just yeah, it's a games different, that were on it, Nintendo right, consoles. Like it, it's a thing they partnered yeah. with and then split up with. I think it's, uh, just, I just want to run down the comments quick because we got a bunch of them. Sure. Um, Rojack said that uh, he thinks the next consoles are the final physical consoles, which you know other people have been saying. So yeah, I think that's a fair statement. I don't disagree with it. Uh, supposedly, PS5 specs were released this week, which that's interesting. I want to look yeah, into that. Yeah, I didn't look into that, um, really. Because it is actually about time for a new generation of consoles. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah it's when, been like five years since Xbox One, hasn't more. it? more. Five uh, or six years. But they didn't, didn't, like didn't them, PS4 they didn't and like stuff them. like that come out when we were in our freshman year? That's 2012? That's 2019? So. That's seven years. I think over the summer. PS4 was freshman year. Was freshman year. I believe Pretty so. Pretty sure. They have had middle ground iterations, though, with better specs, right? Who? PlayStation? Yeah, PlayStation oh, Pro. Yeah, 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 PlayStation Pro yeah, and Xbox, Xbox One X. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh lace up says you know he, he knows that they wouldn't just go for one of them but it'd be cool i i honestly think they might i think when this when the physical you think they might just go to one? well i mean it makes sense like nintendo physical would go to one of them well here's what i'm gonna say physical consoles will end they'll shift to streaming sure. services i wouldn't be surprised if nintendo just like assassinated one of them went to xbox said we want to be the new netflix and you can use us to be the new Netflix. Yeah. Because if you have us, we're Netflix and they're Hulu. Yeah, that's true. You know? <laughs> so true. we just turned into Netflix and made those. So I mean, Hulu. one offers a better deal or more equity for their yeah. their percentage or more equal split. They could just take out any of them. Honestly, I'll go to whichever service decides to give Activision the boot. Because <laughs> clearly, Xbox and PS4 are they are the <clears throat> two top. They're the two competitors. And Nintendo is the outlier, and that's why I feel they're going to be forced to either go one way or explode. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's go one way or explode. I think it's if they go one way, they're they're gonna kill somebody. Yeah, and if they don't, they're probably gonna make more money. Personally, but yeah, that's fine. in my opinion, they'll, they'll still make money, but I, I don't think they'll be as strong yeah. as they feel right now. It looks like um, Rojack sent a link to the uh, PS5 specs, and this is what it has to say on this article is the CPU will have custom 8 cores, 16 yep. threads. Um, the GPU will have custom Navi 8 teraflops. Eight teraflops. Do you know what these mean? I, I'm not familiar okay. with the teraflop rating. <laughs> um, I know my brother knows how they 12 work. 12 gigs but I of don't. memory, uh, 1 terabyte of storage, and the price will go around for 400 so. 12 gigs of just regular memory or RAM. VRAM? RAM, RAM, okay. VRAM, RAM. Whatever well, just RAM. Okay, just RAM. Um, memory is RAM. Does it have VRAM spec? Too? No, mm. it, it just says the graphics card is eight teraflops of memory, which I I'm not familiar with the teraflop measurement. I laugh every time I hear it. It's so dumb. I mean, but, to me that it all sounds like mm, just more, like it's just boosting the numbers. And yeah, yeah. It's it's obviously gonna be 
bigger than the PS4 because it's the next one up. Um, my question is, I could see why they might think this would, like, is the final physical console thing, but, like, when does it, when does it really end? When they shift to streaming. When there's a better sure. way. Yeah. Sure, like streaming. It's just when there's a better way. Yeah. Like, if, if it gets to the point where it makes more sense to do a streaming service than to mm-hmm. own a console, that's when it's over. Or um, when things get small enough and your phone becomes everything. Yeah. You know, you you, you hook your phone it's, into it's a... It's still nowhere near that point. No. Well, yeah, like, the consoles, console market hasn't, other than the Switch, nothing's shown that they're going into that market either. Yeah. But 15 years, I mean, I think we'll see it. Things Time could, moves could really less. fast. Could be less. It's true. Technology moves really really fast it does like, it's like, true but graphics cards are still huge yeah uh, let's see I I mean I think in 15 years a graphics card will be the size I mean I, I guess reasonably the sign of size of like a CPU fan yeah I don't know but so like, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that, like that in more recent years uh, if that was the case right wouldn't you think that the like the 20 series of Nvidia uh, graphics cards which are like exponentially better than the 10 series would be smaller or I guess because w- I think it's important to note that the issue at least size wise is a lot to do with heat I'm pretty sure I think so because most of that space is taken up by like heat the radiators and the yeah. fans so realistically the chips not actually like as big as you might think I like that yeah so in a world where we either have better cooling or chips that don't heat, yeah. you know, that's not, that's l- more realistic. I mean, the chips are already small enough, I think. Well, it's, they're it's, not small enough to fit something like this. I think it could be. Maybe. I think it's closer than you think, but I think heat's probably the biggest issue. I could see 15 years. I think Maybe. 15 Early years. Earlier than that, I said, like, it could be sooner. I I don't know. I don't know about It's hard that. to say. It's, it's because, I mean, in the past... I don't think any of us know Ten. enough about how, it's true. It's how true. the hardware physically works. Per- yeah. Me personally, I could tell you yeah. nothing. But what I could say is that, like, being shown the evidence of, like, when the Xbox 360 came out to what it is now, the Xbox One X is the top of their consoles, um, it doesn't seem likely that it'll be in the next five years. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, um, so I'm just going to read this comment, and I think we should... Yeah, I want to talk about this comment, too. Okay. Um, There's something special about owning a physical copy of a game. I really don't know how I feel about 100% digital gaming. Maybe it's the transit. It's similar to the transition of CDs to iTunes, but I don't know. Um, I actually... Is that you? I told you guys... I told you guys to mute your phones. I have an Android. That's not me. Oh, it's, it's on the stream. What the hell? Uh... Hello? Who are you? My stream's not even updated yet. No, I don't How see it. How did you it. get this number? Who was that? What the hell is that? My stream just got up. What the hell? Let's continue. Um, Alright. So, how I feel about it... I'm okay with digital gaming, but I personally like the physical copies as well. Like, I also like physical like, copies. It, it's something about... It's something about owning. Um, it's something about owning the physical copy. Like, like it, it's like owning a Nintendo sixty four cartridge. It's like I was there when this history was made. Yeah. Um. So I also like owning games, but I really don't buy them anymore. Like I don't buy physical copies anymore. Um, the only games that I try to get physical copies of are like steel books for the games I really like. Oh, like the, yeah. the metal container. Yeah. yeah, like, I remember uh, Assassin's Creed 3 came out with um, a limited release of steelbooks that were sent to GameStop or something like that, mm-hmm. and each store got, like, 15 of them. And I remember our, our boy Sam got one, <laughs> and I gave him five bucks for it. Like, I was, I was, I was really... You took five bucks yeah. for it? I was that? really sad that I didn't get one, because, uh, like, all the stores near us, they were like, oh, yeah, we'll get them on this day. And I called them. They're oh yeah, we got them a week early, and they're gone. 
But yeah, I ended up getting one from him. I have a metal years. GTA case because I bought GTA like That's four sick. years later, That's and sick. they gave me it in it. They're G- just like, GTA oh, we have five. Extra. Yeah. That's what I got for collector's edition. Yeah, they. they... I paid 150 bucks for that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it like a couple years after, and they're like, "Oh, we had this extra metal case." I was like, "Yeah, sure." It's, it it's has like it has sick. the pr- that, yeah protagonist on. It too, yeah, I really wanted the Gears of War four one, mm-hmm. but uh, I so I ordered it off of Amazon. And this is the first time I had ordered a new game off of Amazon, um, like on release, and it said it would show up on the right day, but it didn't. Um, and then I checked Amazon and it said it was two weeks later. So I was like, well, shit, I want to play this game today. I've been waiting for Gears 4 forever. So I downloaded it and got like the digital deluxe version. Um, and the digital deluxe version gave me a code to give to my, one of my friends (laughs) or something like that. And you gave it to me. And I gave it to Jake. Yeah, because I got to play Gears of War 4. then the next day, the Steelbook version came in. Shit. So I had three copies of Gears 4 on the, on the second day it was out. But, For the same price? Or did you get to pay another? Well, I paid twice. But I ended up returning Canceled the Amazon one, one uh, so I didn't get my Steelbook. So that was kind of sad. I about own that. about three or four copies of Grand Theft Auto V because not only did it come out on Xbox 360, it came out on Xbox One, and then it came out... Well, it was also on PlayStation yeah, 4. Yeah, you got it all. So I got it, on, PC. I got it on PC... Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PS4. So four times. I nice. <laughs> um, oh, and going back to the uh, the physical thing, I want to talk about this. Mm. Uh, the Ryzen vinyl is huge right now. Yeah. Like ginormous. Yeah, I, I think vinyl's sick. And a lot of stores are selling them again. It's mainly physical. Yeah. So it's interesting, you know, we have so many streaming services. Like, no one buys DVDs. But, like, I wonder if, like... People buy Blu-ray. Not really. But not some not really. Blu-ray. But, like, not, like, vinyl. Like. <clears throat> you know what's even crazier? Is that we were at Walmart yesterday, and arcade machines are coming back. See, Personal arcade machines. Thing. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. They're selling, like, miniature... Maybe, like, this tall to me sitting Like a down. desktop yeah. arcade Yeah, console. with the stick and the buttons. Yeah. That's cool. It's, They're bringing it all back. I didn't see I think it, the but... physical aspect will take much longer to, to destroy... Then, 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 then you think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, I, d- I don't even think, like, by the time we're, like, like 80, like, I feel like our kids, kids or whatever, will still be craving physical stuff. I want to get to these two comments, yeah, but I, I like that a lot. Um, I think once 5G is out and virtually every cloud and streaming won't even be a thought anymore, there is something nice about physical copies because you own and you can sell them, but the industry is moving away from it. It's more money for them. Well, and he also said, Rojack said, well, really, you never own a digital copy. You lease it, and the companies own the rights to take it back if they feel like it, huh. technically. Which is true with Steam. I, I read this about Steam. I didn't is know that. Is that you're only paying to license the game. Yeah. You don't own it. Yeah, if they want to take it back, it. it's gone. Yep. That's why I, you don't I didn't own know it that. Anymore. Yeah, you, you don't, never I don't think they're it. entitled to a refund, either. No. Because they're just, you're leasing it. That's um, crazy. Yeah, and I, I want to read this last comment, too. Uh, Papa John's Pizza Pie says, I think 100% digital gaming is inevitable. People said the same thing about records, cassettes, CDs, and even recently movies. While I'm sure some people will be interested in physical copies, I believe most people will jump into digital. Yeah, yeah, I think true. most people already have. There's a game, bigger yeah. market for digital, but like, there will come a time where with vinyl, it's going to come back. Yeah, think and people are going to want it. I think I think part of the shift to digital gaming is also that memory is so cheap now. Like, well, yeah. hard drive space is so yeah, cheap it is. now. It really like, is. You can you can get like a four terabyte hard drive for like a hundred and fifty bucks, yeah. and you're not gonna fill that thing up quick. No, no, no probably less. Yeah. It's somewhere around there. Yeah, right around there. Um, yeah, I, I think it'd be interesting. I wonder if like DVDs are gonna like come back. Like people are gonna I don't like, know. Yeah, the 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 tough part is like a lot of these things are printed in such mass amounts now. Like the age of DVDs, like. There's not a lot of rare DVDs, you mm-hmm. know, like, like, like card games. Print runs when they first released, so small, so it drives that that yeah. price up and it drives that rarity that people want to collect. But um, with DVDs, it's like there's probably a bajillion copies of any movie that you want to find. You can find them at any thrift shop for, yeah. you know, a dollar. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, merge topics. Yeah, we've been on this one for like yeah. forty minutes. Merge. 50. Um, let's go down. So this was, uh, if there's 
a raven out there in chat. This was a request on our Instagram to talk about gaming as profession. I will bring up the comment uh, on my phone while I switch, but um, I think this is a great thing for us to talk about. Now, we mentioned it at some point earlier, um, or maybe in the last stream. Um, I think we mentioned it in the last stream. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, from Raven... Um, the idea of talking about making gaming a career and thinking if it's going to last or where it's going to go. Um, so, let's get right into it. Yeah. Gaming as a career. Now, we can talk about both um, professional sports teams, esports teams, yep. and someone like the a personality. Uh, underdog yeah. PewDiePie. Or, yeah, personality. Underdog PewDiePie. Like, well. not PewDiePie, but underdog, <laughs> yeah. like the underdog version of PewDiePie. All right. So, um, anybody want to start? I mean, I think that at least being a competitive gamer, I think the the numbers probably line up close to like we were saying in our past stream, um, playing competitive sports. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think that uh, being an entertainer, it's more possible than being yeah. like like a sports entertainer. So I think that's kind of the trade off. Um, it, being an entertainer, like. Like even like us, like it's it's a lot easier to get yourself out there and mm -hmm. like build your name. Yeah, because whereas... we don't necessarily need the skill at the game. Yeah, we're just playing it and like um, this is kind of this is on topic, but a little bit like it wasn't on stream. Uh, after last stream, we played Zelda, and I thought it would have been so perfect um, if we were like doing a gaming session because Nick was doing voices of NPCs that yeah. were so <laughs> crazy, and it's like. You don't need to be really good at a game to make it a fun experience. Make it an experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's where I fall into, where I don't enjoy esports at, like, at all because I'm not a PvP kind of gamer. Um, I, hey, I just, just saying, uh, WoW has the Mythic Dungeon Invitational Tournament, and which is 100% PvE. Uh, it has a built-in timer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's based off of who can clear it the fastest See, now, at the same difficulty. Now, that would be more interesting to me to watch. Yeah. Um, There's but, a whole meta game and stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah, and that that's very interesting that that's even in the esports yeah. genre. Is that it's new. as a speedrun? No. Because it's speed competitive. Runs, speed runs aren't considered PV. I mean, not PV. Um, pro like, professional, are they? Or as of I yet? I think so. Which is kind of... It kind of I think if you're be. a professional speedrunner, you're probably a professional streamer. Yeah. Do you're you not... do you think that you could get the title professional speedrunner? Maybe. I I feel like it's a fair game. I yeah. mean, if you can be a professional gamer, why can't you be a professional speedrunner? I think you're a professional gamer if you're a professional speedrunner. <laughs> what yeah, I mean is like games. what I mean is like like a subcategory. Yeah. Like I don't know. Well, I think to be a professional gamer, you have to. I think the easiest definition is your primary source of income is involved in gaming. I don't think so. No? No, because then you could be an entertainer. You're not a professional yeah. gamer. Yeah, you could be. I think professional gaming means that you have to be top tier. Of yeah. Or top ex ex of of your, exilon of, of, your, of, of, your, of your subcategory of your, yeah, of your game. Yeah, of whatever game you're playing. Like, yeah. Whether it's, like, whatever. Um, well, I kind of... Speedrunning is the top. You know, if you're yeah. a professional speedrunner, you have records. Technically, you're top of yeah. everybody. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so the, I guess you, I guess you are kind of see it is, like... Um, you are so there's professional drivers, but like there, I don't know if this is accurate because I'm not too familiar with the racing. But like there's professional drivers, but like they're in the subcategory of like race car, SUV. Like is that a thing? I don't know. So pretend it is. Yeah. I think it might be, but like. Well, I mean, there's well, like there's Formula like, One. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. And like then that. and then there's NASCAR um, and then there's uh, drag racing. Yeah. So know. it's like professional gamer doesn't mean just one thing. Sure. It's like professional gamer in the speed running category. And I feel like that should be brought up upon. That's but, fair. But yeah. that's that's kind of off. I think that's also important. But I, I think yeah. But well, maybe we're going the same way. Yeah. You you're not gonna make money from being a speedrunner specifically. Yeah. Like you're Why like not? getting the new record doesn't mean you get five thousand dollars. No, but people watch you. Right. So, so I, I think the argument is you're an entertainer. You're, yeah, I think. But I okay, I put it in the same category. Okay, I think so. I think you're a professional gamer if your profession is streaming games. Sure. I, I don't think so. Then it, the, I, mud, I the water gets very muddy. You know. You don't think that you're a professional? No, I think professional. Gamer if, oh, the, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Let, let me think that over. You said professional gamer if you stream games. Yeah, I think I think you're a professional gamer because gaming is your profession. 
That I mean, that's a fair way of words, but I think, like, legitimately, I don't think that's how it works. Like, no? I think you'd be a professional entertainer. I guess so. Because I, I do get why you would think that, yeah. but I, I just, I don't think you'd be a professional gamer like, because, just because guess, you're... If you only play League, and you're a streamer... I mean, that is know? an eSport game, but I don't think, because you're not on a team and you're not fighting for a tournament or anything... Yeah, that's fair. Like, yeah. you can play basketball at a rec center and own it, and you could be a professional but you're not basketball player. Money. Well, at a rec center, I mean, I guess not, but... Like I don't know, you know. It, no, I think what you're saying is that I, I was like, on a point now. I lost. You need it. the, you know, you need to get like a sponsorship or like, or you need to be competing in tournaments at the pro level to okay. be a pro gamer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's fine. a good way to put it. Um, and I think the speedrunners are entertainers at the end of the so day. So what was the comment? Uh, the comment, like, what was the request? It was, and I just put it away again. <laughs> it was um us talking about making gaming a career and thinking if it's going to last or where it's okay, going to so go. Okay, so it's gaming a career. In, in general, okay. just gaming. Okay. Alright. I'm fine with that. So, any thoughts on that? Uh, my opinion? Yeah. So, I think it's kind of just a fact now that uh, as somebody who's trying to make a living uh, through gaming, there's really two avenues, right? Streaming, which I, I guess I'll agree with is just entertaining. Um, and then there's being a professional. Uh, which is playing on stage and maybe being in a team if it's mm-hmm. a team being game. sponsored or winning tournament money. Yeah. yeah, winning tournament money, I think, yeah. is a good way to put it. Um, so I, I think it's inarguable that streaming makes more money in 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to make gaming your long-term career, I think if you have the skill, being a pro gamer is a good foot in the door, right? So... You get your start by being a professional, so you get some infamy, some clout, whatever, and then you switch over to streaming, and the people who liked watching the pro scene come over, now you've got a viewer base, and then you can just pile it on from there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the easiest way to get your foot in the door, if you have that skill level. Um, And then... Uh, Can I make a comment about that? I think that the way the industry is pushing and moving, that won't be the case for very long uh in esports is a industry that's been rapidly growing and in my it's opinion, now rapidly declining is it, it yeah is, yeah like money wise income wise. well the thing is a lot of streamers from esports are moving to their own version of streaming just so becoming entertainers yeah i think the actual stats on that you're I'm, sure I'm, that it's declining? I'm pretty sure that it's declining as a whole i mean maybe not overseas but i'm, I'm almost positive u.s can well, we have people like pokemon who were on a team were they not not a professional team. She was never on a professional team? Really? I need numbers, but last I knew of, the industry was approaching the likes of, like, NHL-level income. I don't know. Um, but at least, know, at least to my opinion and uh, what I expected to do, I expected to keep increasing, and I do expect it to reach or surpass pro-level sports mm-hmm. at some point. The, the, the base that it can touch is uh, larger and... As uh, people age, you know, as we get to our 40s, I think we'll still be watching. Or at least a large yeah. portion of us will still be watching, and the era of modern day sports will disappear more. So I think hmm. that um, the younger people will still be more engaged with Fortnite tournaments than football tournaments. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I and agree. I think we will still be more engaged with Fortnite tournaments than with football tournaments. Um, so, which that means more money more ways to pay up players, and eventually you'll have players that are on salaries that make more sense than streaming. Yeah. Uh, okay. Entertainment streaming. Unless, I mean, if it is actually declining, which is hard for me to believe. I mean, at least for the games that I actually follow, it, it's been yeah. on a pretty big decline. I mean, a, a good example of that is, like, I mean, specifically Blizzard cut funding to... Uh, they actually didn't cut funding. They cut off Heroes of the Storm professionally in every single way. Um, and there's also talk of them cutting the uh, Hearthstone professional community. Really? Yeah. That's wild. I'm pretty sure they did cut funding, but there's talk of them actually, you know, like, huh. slowing it down. I mean, you look at things like League, though, like, their world tournaments are, like, insane. They're huge, but they're not, like, the vast majority of uh, big esport consumers are overseas in Asia. Yeah. Uh, in Korea, specifically, yeah, I mean, that's... uh Professional StarCraft gaming is... That's where their big celebrities come yeah. from. 
Yeah. Like, StarCraft is huge over there. Um, and it has been since, like, the 90s. Yeah. So they, they've had a lot of time to evolve. And in their region, uh, professional gamers are bigger than professional sports mm-hmm. players. Even, that's not going Even some anywhere. music stars, they're bigger yeah. than that. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think if not anything, it's seeping towards us, and it will grow and continually grow. I'm fucking out of the loop. I really thought Pokemon was a professional. Yeah, no. She, I, she, thought, she, I thought she was per, like a professional. They, I, on a there's professional only team. there's only been one or two female gamers that have been on a professional league team, and I don't know if any of them have um, actually played. Rojek Rojek just yeah. said the League of Legends final matched the Super Bowl in viewership. Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. You know, the finals of Worlds for League are always huge. Worlds in general is always huge. Yeah. So. World of Warcraft has the PvE stuff in the esports. He says category. League's still on the rise, which I I was okay. thinking League was starting to decline. Maybe but, maybe in North America a little yeah. bit. I mean, from but what I've I seen, I think on the whole it seems it's like probably, it's dropping yeah. still. Like specifically in North America, from what I've seen, it seems like it's dropping. Yeah, and even even on Twitch, it's dropping lower and lower. Well, probably because Fortnite is accounts. like. Fortnite like oh, killed some of the league entertainers. Yeah, yeah. a lot of like them just Pokemon. Moved over. Yeah, like yeah. Pokemon. Hey, I knew she was in there somewhere. Um, uh, it, uh, speaking of Fortnite, did you know Ninja's not on the top anymore? Really? I heard of this. Yeah, we heard of it. Yeah. Wait, yeah. who is? Uh, <laughs> couldn't tell you. Some his other name. guy. <laughs> couldn't tell you his name, but apparently he is a better ninja. Yeah. Oh, is he a blonde kid that kind of looks I, like Logan I Paul? Think so? I, I think so. I think he's the number one most uh, uh, subscribed Yeah, that's what Twitch it is. Now. That's what it is. Most subscribed and on Ninja's Twitch. at like four? I think I know what you're talking from about. What, yeah. From rumor has it. Um, but I thought that was a Let's, let's try to see you later. dive so, back so in. So what I want to talk about is in the esports um, category, what like what does WoW have in there? Very World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, like the, only the PvE? No, there's uh, arena tournaments and um and then pve tournaments Mm -hmm. so the arena one has been around forever uh because they've always had the championships at blizzcon but it's never been big Mm -hmm. um it's it's a very it's a very niche uh professional group and is it just a one-time tournament i I think they have like the qualifiers streamed and stuff like that Mm -hmm. But it's not like a circuit, like uh, like I think there is split stuff. Uh, no, there's no splits or anything like that. From what from what I know, keep in mind I, I've never actively followed it, but I don't I don't I don't think it's nearly as in depth as the league or Overwatch yeah. stuff is. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you guys feel about being an entertainer? Um, I wrote down that it's kind of interesting that things kind of devolve into a job eventually. And a lot of these people, like, you always hear stories of, like, people burning out or just, like, you know, it went from their hobby to their, like, hell or whatever. Like, they're, yeah. they're kind of trapped and it's their only avenue of, uh, or, yeah, avenue of revenue. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, do you have any strong I think it's scary that? to think about for someone like me and us who want to be that. Yeah. I mean... I'm pretty sure we all have the same goal to yeah, I mean, make something ba- of ourselves through this podcast. Baseline to have fun and stuff, um, but secondary goal, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's all about fun. It, you know, right now, of course, it's all about yeah. fun. But like, if something ever comes of this, like, thanks to the viewers, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I'd want something from it, and and I'd be okay with calling it a career or yeah. a part time job. Yeah. Thing is, is like it it does worry me seeing people burn out and things like that because. At, at one point, people say, like, and a lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of people say, like, like this, it becomes a job, and then, like, everyone hates jobs. Yeah. Everyone yeah. hates a job. So, like, when it goes from hobby to job, it, it really falls flat, and it does worry me, yeah, going I mean, into the industry like that. I don't even game that much anymore. To be like, honest, I, like, I've been playing single-player games here and there. Like, I play Fallout 4. Um but overall, I'm not spending as much time gaming. I'm yeah. actually, like, here writing stuff <laughs> for the podcast and getting ready for the podcast. And, like, I'm... And school, too. But yeah. I'm focusing on this podcast because I, I'm... It's my hobby right now. Yeah. It's our hobby. I mean, like... So, for me, I was... Over the, the summer break, I was getting really bored of gaming. Like, I came out strong, you know. I was mostly gaming. Um and more towards the end of it, I was completely burnt out in, like, every game that mm-hmm. I possibly want to play. I usually have a rotation of, like, competitive games like League, Counter-Strike, yeah. sometimes Smite, sometimes Overwatch, but I didn't want to play any of them. 
Um, and I, I ended up getting back into WoW. So I raid on WoW Tuesday and Thursday night from 9 to midnight. And when I have free time, I hop on WoW and I do some grinding. And then sure. when I'm not doing that, I'm... You know, at school four days a week, work three days a week, violin lessons, and yeah. that kind of thing. That's yeah. the thing is, like, school came back, so yeah. it gives me something more to do. But a lot of my time I spend gaming. And, and in all honesty, we, sh- we probably should set up gaming accounts on Twitch and just, yeah. while we're playing, just stream it because it doesn't hurt. I think um, one of the, I guess not scary things, but if you're going into this as, um, or you want to make it your thing, like, it takes a whole lot of things going right and a whole lot of devotion, like, in the I had in the some dark. things written down about that. So, like, I was saying, to to be a professional uh, entertainer, like, just professional streamer, um, it takes one of two things, right? So you either have to be, like, a really interesting person mm-hmm. uh, with a fun personality that keeps people watching. Yeah. Or you need to have, like, really good gameplay consistently. Right? Yeah. And those are the two big ones that we tend to see. Because you get somebody like Rush in League who, like, you know, he barely speaks English. Yeah. But his gameplay is completely nuts, so everybody loves watching him. Yeah. Um, and then you get somebody like I'm a Cutie Pie who's, like, a mix of both. Yeah. Right? And he's been the top dog for a long time because he's got both yeah, going for both him. Um, and then you end up with some of your not-so-high-tier streamers who have one or the other going for them. Yeah. Um, and that that's basically it, right? But another thing about that is starting streaming takes a ton of finesse. Like, you have to have some outlet to get yourself noticed. And, yeah. Um, and then there's, you know, it requires endless hours of trying and failing to yeah. actually get started. With no profit. That's, that's the scary part yeah. is, like... You know, we know someone that, like, wants to be a streamer, um, and I'm all for it, but it's like, you gotta be so devoted, and you have to just deal with no profit. And even if you got, like, even if you have, like, 500 concurrent viewers, like, or whatever, like, whatever that splits into in subscribers, like, you're still not, like, making, like, a lot of money. Yeah. Like, you might be making, like, 20,000 per year. Maybe with 500 concurrent viewers. And, like, that's what? Like, a job that pays... It's about minimum wage. You're also, to maintain, to maintain that amount price. of people, you're going to be streaming, like, 12 hours a day. Yeah, yeah, like, eight So, like, you're not going to have much of a life, either. Yeah. I mean, it'll turn into your actual job. Yeah. And that's a job that's not... I mean, as long as you're staying loving it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um, but, like, it's... it's it's a it's lot. Tough. It's I still mean, a job. It no kind of reminds what. me of being, um, or kind of what being an artist is, or being a commercial artist, they mm-hmm. call it, um, where there are ways to make different money, or different avenues to make money. So, like, you could do, like, commissions, and then your own stuff, and then make something for someone else. Or, like, streaming, you could, like, make merch, uh, get on YouTube, get yeah. some money that way. So I think if you're good at managing all that and manage your social media, it could work out for you. But mm-hmm. I feel like it's a lot of work and a lot of risk. But, I mean, if you want to do it because you love it, you know, no. more power to you, as they say. Yeah. Any other opinions on that? Um, I think from there we can move on to our final topic. Sure. Final topic. Um, but I would like to say uh, thank you to Raven for suggesting that. Um, yeah, if you're out there somewhere... Hope we answered some questions and gave our thoughts on what you're thinking about. Um, if you have suggestions like uh, a viewer does, we have a suggestion box down below. You can uh, suggest whatever you might think of, a, a thought, an opinion, something you want from us. Go right ahead. Um, you can also follow us in the bottom left of the stream. You can see all of our socials and the at name. That's where you can find us. Search it on Instagram, Facebook, um, and YouTube, you'll find it at the old podcast. And tell us what you want to hear. <laughs> tell us what you want to hear. So, All right. last topic of the day. EA strikes back. <laughs> Similar to the Empire. Similar to the Empire. Well, it's because, and I have a lot written down about this. Yeah. If you want me so, to go on. I'll, I'll preface. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, EA had a development company they owned uh, working on developing a Star Wars game. It was a non-Battlefront title. Yes. Um, and 
Uh, that company shut down. EA took the license and started working on it. And as of last week, uh, it was cut. Mm. And so, I have a quote um, that EA... Uh, I, I cut this quote, quote into pieces where the relevant parts stick out. Um, but it was a quote after the cancellation and like what the future of EA Star Wars meant. And they had to say, There's been speculation overnight about a Star Wars project. Dot, dot, dot. We're fully committed to making Star Wars content and games. Dot, dot, dot. Excited about the new game that they're making with Respawn, who made Titanfall, yep. a division of EA, um, called Jedi Fallen, or Star Wars Jedi Knight, maybe, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, I didn't get the full title from the article. Um, so apparently Visceral Games, who made Dead Space 1, 2, 3, um, which were great games, by yep. the way, by EA, um, they were working on a Star Wars game, but that company was shut down. They were working on that game from 2013 to 2017. Um, so the work done by them, I guess that's what they mean when we're fully committed to making Star Wars content in games, is that like they're just going to keep going anyways with yep. what they've created. Um, but like I said, they, they were shut down and they made Dead Space, and that's kind of where we stand with it. Yeah. And um, a lot of people... Um, flashback from that because of star wars and ea's uh history battlefront yeah. so what i actually what i actually wanted to talk about with this was like what does everybody think about the potential of ea making more star wars games i mean i'll be um, real with you like despite battlefront 2's hectic loot box situation i still enjoyed the game for what it was yeah i did too i, I liked the um it was the heroes mode. Yeah, like like gameplay itself, not not counting the PvP elements or like just gameplay, the way the game worked, the way you played as heroes, the way the heroes worked, the way the heroes functioned. Um, it was all great. Graphically, it was great. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it just wasn't balanced because of the loot boxes. But like, you could grind. You could grind. But you could also just it took pay. such a long time. You could also time. just pay it against. Yeah, it, it took me so long to grind out because uh, me and Jake mostly played the heroes versus villains mode, and uh, I was a Ray main. Yeah, I was I was on Emperor Palpatine, who when the game came out, everybody thought was ridiculously underpowered. Um, and then they buffed him. They they buffed him, and he was and people undefeated. still thought he was terrible. Yeah, everybody still thought he was terrible. But at that point, I had already had all three of my cards maxed. Yeah. <laughs> And I was just completely destroying yeah. everybody. Um, and it, it was so much fun. And then after I stopped playing, people realized he was busted. And he mm. caught a shit ton of nerfs. I'm yeah. pretty sure he's, like, terrible. Yeah. But um, that's a game, too, that, like, halfway through the year that it was uh, released, they, they ended up revamping the entire game. Like, they, they edited the entire game huh. to work without the loot boxes. Yeah. And so if we were to play it right now, it would be a completely different game from what we played the first time. But the problem is, is they already lost people. They're not getting them back. No. You know. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting EA having another title. I mean, they got clapped. They for, did. They really doing did. what they did. Even the government stepped in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? multiple governments multiple stepped in. Multiple governments stepped in with yeah, the loot Yeah, they got freaking clapped. So it's like, you know, when it first came out, we were like, man, EA got that title again. Don't screw it up. And then they screwed it up. So yeah. it's like, how many times do you have to punish a company with your wallet? Yeah. To like, but you still want to play it. You well, know? The, the problem with it. the first Battlefront was there was no content. Yeah, they released it. And for what it was, it was great. There were two maps but for there the was big game mode. Just, and like two maps for the small yeah, one. Yeah, it was not worth 60 bucks. No. And that game was clapped too. And it got a season pass with DLC that didn't make up for any of it. Yeah. And that game also got clapped, yeah. But I mean, you'd think EA would fix their problems and slowly hone in on the the gem but i don't know that's the thing is probably like, yeah. not right? like, third, the, third time's the charm the cool you know? thing like, is like those games really like they felt good um, yeah, they did like, feel they, good. it, it, was, it was really immersive like it was a great star wars experience excluding you know the semi-fraudulent way they yeah. they monetized the game um and it, it was a really good time and mm. like they're cool i'm a hundred percent positive that if EA releases another Battlefront, or not Battlefront, another Star Wars game, the monetization method's gonna be completely different. So, um, the thing but, about Battlefront, before we get to the comment that we just got, um, 
the thing about Battlefront for me was that playing it on PC when it came out and everything, it had so much controversy around it. And I personally just, I was just loving Star Wars at the moment. The movie was about to come out. We're just all in the Star Wars <laughs> mood. So I'm playing this Star Wars game, and because people are seeing through it, bless you. Thank you. Um, because people are seeing through it. People are seeing through the game, like, all of its flaws. The The problem I had with it was that I couldn't get into full games. I couldn't. I could barely play the game because people were already boycotting it, already yeah. not getting it. And the boycott was huge. The there boycott was, there was, was a enormous. boycott like immediately. I, I got into lobbies and had to wait like thirty minutes to play a game because there was not enough players, and we had yeah. to wait for those stragglers to come along. And let's let's get to these comments. Rojack said, "I love Battlefront, and they ruined it." That's fair. That's fair. They they did. Um, I would love a new Dark Forces game, which those. I played those when I was younger on the PC. I believe those are first person. The the Dark Forces, I think they led into the Jedi Knight games, which were all story-based games with multiplayer on the side, but not really the point. Um, They were just like, they're like filler Star Wars stories to keep you involved in the non-canonical lore. Yeah. and a VR Jedi game would be great. Why this doesn't exist, I have no clue. That's true. <laughs> but Buddy has no faith in EA, EA at this point. Yeah, I mean, which I think is where a lot of people so are. It's so true, man. At this point, it's so hard to think that anything EA makes is going to be worthwhile. <laughs> like mm-hmm. even Battlefield at this point, it's like I'm going to pay sixty dollars for the title, another sixty dollars for the season pass, and I'm going to have to wait six months for there to be any real content. Speaking of EA, yet again, did they mess up? Not with Star Wars, but with Battlefield Five. Yeah. It released with half the game's content. And it was already developed. A $60 game released with half the content. And then you go into the story or something and you're like, oh, this part's coming later in the year. Yeah. It's (laughs) like, I just paid 60 bucks for this game. It has like four maps. The rest of the maps are coming later. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know why they don't fix it. It's so bizarre. I mean, I guess it's still making money. So So the the (laughs) argument that big triple a companies like ea make is that 60 dollars isn't enough to cover the manufacturing or development cost of the game um i mean for what it's worth those battlefield games are huge and like all the destructible scenery and stuff must be a lot of work to make but like nobody wants to pay 120 dollars for a battlefield sure. game battlefield games just like call of duty they have a uh like a, a deadline yeah after a year when the next one comes out they die yeah or at least for the most part they just die because the the people who still play those you know one year games like call of duty and battlefield they just move on to the next one when it comes out yeah right Uh, i think one thing i want to talk about is there are so many franchises that you know would be fantastic in a game form especially in a story driven game form it's kind of bizarre like i can't really think of many in the triple a title section that I've released, can you? Because like, like just story. Well, like, like Harry Potter is coming out. There was a leaked game that looked really good, and it, yeah. it had triple A graphics. Yeah. Like a lot of these these movies, like they have such rich storytelling aspects and visual aspects, and it feels like why aren't people taking a home like taking advantage of it? I know you need like to get clearance and etc. Yeah. They're coming up slowly. Like yeah. the Lord of the Rings got the. Uh, yeah, like... What is it, the Shadow, Shadow of Mordor? Mordor. Yeah. Yeah. And pe- those games are pretty widely liked, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, people really um, like They're kind of like the new Assassin's Creed games, because Assassin's Creed isn't Assassin's that's, that's Creed anymore. Example. That's a good example, Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. Um, but I feel like with games like God of War being so cinematic and being so successful and things like Red Dead, yeah. um, I'm hoping that, you know, we get a really cool Star Wars single player with the with a rich universe. Yeah, you know? the thing is too is Battlefront 2 had a single player game. It was alright. And it yeah, it was Did it, have a single player? it yeah. did, yeah. That that's the thing that people didn't like about the first one is it didn't have a single player. Yeah. Game. Was, they added it in the second one and it was who would you play as? You played as Aiden Versio. Yeah. Which was, was the character uh, you also played in multiplayer. Which yeah, was it, was, it was terrible because there was like a really limited amount of characters available for the heroes and villains. Yeah. And one of them was a character you'd never want to play because like she's only in this mo- in this game. Yeah. yeah. That kind of goes back to the... Um, technically a canonical character now because through yeah. the game. Yeah, the story is technically canon. Yeah. But, um, 
this kind of goes back to the icon thing we're talking about yeah. a little bit sure but like Iden Versio is like they want to make her like the new icon which I thought the story and now that I remember the story of being the bad guy that's kind of cool yeah that's kind of risk it's cool until she switches to the good side yeah. because <laughs> that's good storytelling yeah they can't they can't play the bad side of course yeah, not. It's, like, it's uh, funny how they, they put her in villains so that way you, you don't know the twist yeah well, there, there was a game called uh, Star Wars um, Force Unleashed, where it was not canonical, and you were like... That was the, on the Wii, wasn't it? I think there was, it was a version on, like, of it on the Wii. Uh, um, but you played like you played as the apprentice to Darth Vader. And, like, you, in that game, it's non-canonical, so you literally, like, you have a, a huge fight with Luke Skywalker and then murder him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then Han Solo and Chewbacca, you murder them. <laughs> That's so, like, sweet. Yeah, like... That's a fun direction, and it's not canonical. But I actually like, thought those games were fun. Yeah, they were. They were pretty fun. I, I played they one recently. They were just recently. like hacking. I played slash one recently because I think it was free for uh, Xbox Gold or something like that. But like, with with something like Battlefront's engine, which is like so defined and graphically amazing to see like Darth yeah. Vader in that game, um, they could. Was it like Frostbite Four or something? Something like that. Something like that. They could have easily made a fantastic single player and balanced multiplayer game. I just, yeah. yeah Rojak said, loved that Force un- Force Unleashed. Yeah, they just put you in a Star Wars yeah. world. And I I'm like gonna go look crazy. up who made that game. I I, I don't want to say EA. Yeah, yeah, I'd be sick if you you had non canonical like. It's not Ubisoft, is it? Oh right, Lucas Arts. So they had their they literally had their own um, company making games. Of Star Wars, Star Wars games. And it's a THQ as well. Yeah, so but LucasArts was... was like partnered with them. I'm pretty yeah. sure. But THQ is dead, right? Mm, I believe they are dead now. Yes. Yeah. Good old Star Killer. Yeah, that was the name of the guy you played as. Yeah, he played Star, Star Killer. Killer. <laughs> I think I've heard of that actually. Yeah. Did he have like cinematic? Did they do cinematic? Yeah, they did some cinematic so, cutscenes yeah. and stuff. It was cool. Though. I don't remember which one I played. I think I played it on PSP. Um, it makes sense. It was everywhere. And uh, there were lightsaber colors that were hidden. Like, those were, like, the collectibles. And I remember I found a purple lightsaber, and I was like, oh, it's on now. <laughs> it was so cool. I don't know. I wish, I wish gaming companies would take advantage of these. Or having, like, a... I guess Aliens, that's a good one. That came Alien out. They did make a good game, they, though. They made a good game. Yeah. yeah Alien yeah, yeah. Isolation, yeah. Alien Isolation yeah, so was up. Did you not see it? Alien Isolation? Or play it or anything? Game. I've, I've seen yeah. it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah, very cool. Very great game. I played it a bit. It's actually genuinely scary, too. Yeah, it, it, it's the perfect storm of, like, yeah. movie into game. It's, like, what needs to happen. Yeah. So you hope that EA does it right. <laughs> but it got canceled, right? Uh, what did? Didn't that... The, their new... Like, that one from... That studio got canceled, right? Yes. But they're so, still making so Star Wars games. So there's still a different division making a Star Wars game. Yeah. Okay. But the one that was like hinted at for six years. It was no it was a single player game. Yeah. I'm sure I bet I bet they saved the properties though. It's probably Probably. They, I doubt they yeah. crashed it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. they have it. I think it was moved over to the Vancouver office. Maybe. Which is another EA division. Alright, I don't there's, I don't think I don't think there's much left to say about no, this. No, I mean, yeah. we, we got our opinions out. Yeah, so just... Uh, Rojak says it's like Star Wars God of War. Yeah, those games yeah. were very cinematic like that, for sure. All right, so... Uh, to close it out... Um, follow us on all of our social yes. media platforms if you haven't. It's the best way to get updates on what's going on. For sure. Uh, we usually throw some clips over on uh, on our Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just... Some highlights, maybe something you missed. I don't know. Um, some hamsters, who knows? Some what? But hamsters. So, oh, right see y'all in the next one. Make sure to follow us. Our links are down below. And uh, leave and, uh, a suggestion in the suggestion box, and maybe we'll talk about it next week. If you feel like it, I'll uh, talk to you later. Consume an egg. Consume an egg.